Hello everyone. Uh, how is the sound? Is the sound okay? Somebody with fast fingers tell me how the sound is. I'm just trying to do this Ugh. in a slightly different space than usual. All the fun of the fair. Right, that's a bit better. There's some light, isn't there? Hmm, no one's saying anything. Does that mean nothing is working? Or, uh, is it? I was gonna say something really dumb then. I was gonna go, oh, nod if you can hear me. Um, I can't see you. I, I have to be the one nodding. Um, well, no one's saying in the chat that they can't hear me, so grand. Hi, everyone. Um, Richard says, missed the travel info from today's fake news. I'll have you know there is nothing fake news about my news broadcasts, Richard. They are alternative news for people that can't stand reality. Um, the travel, today's travel was uh, don't. Yeah, mainly just don't. Yeah. Did you see the sport news, though? Because it was the sport news that I really felt was, Mwah! hello. Um, so welcome to today. Um, have you had a nice day? I've had, who was the, who's the sports ball? John. John, I hope you're, John, if you're not taking the mic, mate, you need to toddle off now because this book is, well, I mean, I can't even pretend I'm mad if you don't know who Jurgen Klopp is because I didn't know who he was until about six weeks ago and uh, now he is everything. He didn't call, no. Um, uh, what was I going to say? My day today. Yeah, I've had an okay day today. It's been all right. I um. Uh, shall I tell you this? Oh yeah, fuck it, why not? We're friends now, aren't we? I've decided to go back on my antidepressants. I'm struggling a bit and today's been a really difficult day. And uh, I came off them about a year and a half, two years ago. And today I phoned the doctor and just said that stuff's tough. And it was really nice actually to have him just go, yeah, that doesn't sound like something you should be able to cope with. So as of tomorrow, Happiness will reign supreme in this giant shiny forehead of mine. Good morning, New Zealand. New Zealand's woken up uh, Saturday and slightly hung over here. Ooh, still adhering to a Friday night drinking rule, are you? We're just doing it all day all long. This is rum. It's not, it's, uh, it's tea. I love tea. I love tea so much. We're going through so many tea bags. Um, right, it's five past. I've overshared. We, <laughs> we should probably do a chapter, shouldn't we? Let's do a chapter. Um, I've written some new stuff for this chapter. I reread it and it was just missing something. So I've added some. So I hope it's all right. I hope I've written it. I mean, I feel like I'm back in the flow of how it the thing works um oh look there's the green screen in the background that's where we filmed Nessie my husband with a sock on his hand um for those of you that have seen the news drip video right you're waffling now woman get on okay uh okay where were we up to chapter 36 so Hamish and the angel are in Staple Grove chatting and everybody is looking for them um uh, well you know it's Mrs Chu and Sarah and everyone um, he could be in trouble, said Jesus warily. That long pause there, by the way, was me desperately trying to remember what accent everyone was meant to have. It's like, Jesus, he's going to have an accent, but I couldn't for the life of me remember what it was supposed to be. I have remembered now. Um, human hairball, I take my tea, builder's tea, bag left in, preferably Yorkshire gold, if we can afford it, and milk. And it, it dairy milk i have oat milk in pretty much everything but dairy milk for tea and i just feel guilty about it um right he could be in trouble said jesus warily he didn't have any desire to panic sarah or the gilmores but he had an uneasy feeling that they ought to move quickly something wasn't right where would he be likely to go Sarah didn't know. She couldn't think at all. Her whole brain had melted down to a badly pixelated image of the word doom. Sarah, 
Jesus tried again more firmly. Where would he be likely to go? I don't know, she dithered. He's never run off like this before. Makes him sound like a puppy, said Catherine fairly unhelpfully. Maybe he's not run off. Maybe he's just popped out for a bit. No, she insisted. I can feel it. I know something's wrong. He'd have said where he was going. Okay, Frank stood up. He felt like he could be useful here. So we need to go and look for him. Sarah, you ought to go and look in the place you think he'd be most likely to go. Where would that be? Um, maybe up the field? Hang on, have we already read this chapter? No, we haven't. I read it to Tom yesterday to check that it was okay. Whoa, that was a weird moment. Uh, <laughs> oh, it was one of those, like, uh, I'm doing an exam in my underwear. Or sometimes, like, when you do two gigs in a night with stand-up and you're at the second gig and you get halfway through a joke and you think, have I already told this one here? Or was it at the gig I did? Sometimes in central London, you do four shows and you go from venue to venue, like, show on show. And by the fourth show, you've got absolutely no idea what's coming out your mouth. Oh. No, we haven't already done this one. Um, okay, said Frank in his element. Now there was a crisis to deal with. Your mum can go with you? Catherine nodded. Jesus and I will pop round to some of the neighbours and see if he's there. If not, they can join the search party. Yes? And this isn't Avery acting? Asked Catherine nervously. No, said Jesus gravely. Not at all. Thank you, Frank. I think that's a very practical plan. Let's get going. We've not got a moment to lose. Sarah and Catherine pulled on coats and headed out the front door. Catherine took Sarah's hand and they strode purposefully down the small lane that contained just Sarah's and Mrs. Shoe's houses. They hadn't gone more than four steps when Sarah saw Mrs. Shoe step out of her front door and look at them coming down the road. She had her coat and wellies on. What's wrong? called Mrs. Shoe. How does she know something's wrong? Sarah muttered to her mother. Perceptive old bat, said Catherine, and squeezed Sarah's hand. They reached Mrs. Shoe thirty seconds later, and she eyed them beadily. What's happened? she asked. It's Hamish, said Sarah, trying to channel the purposeful demeanour her father had used earlier. He seems to have disappeared off, and Jesus is worried. We're going to organise a search party to look for him. Have you seen him? No, I've not seen him, dear, but I did feel like something was up. There was a funny shift in the air. I felt it go right through my bones. Not to worry, though, dear, we'll find him. Sarah looked between the faces of the two women and felt comforted to know they were both by her side. Hamish woke himself from his thoughts with a laugh. He shook his head and enjoyed the scratchy sound his trainers made on the gravel as he worked his toes. Oh, what were we doing with the angel? Oh, she was French, wasn't she? Uh, what is so funny? asked the angel. Oh, nothing. <laughs> oh, nothing. No, what is Scottish? Every goddamn time. Um, nothing. That'll have to do. Oh, nothing, said Hamish. He squinted at the buildings around them and shook the last of the laugh from the back of his throat. Go on, uh, share. The angel dug her elbow playfully into his side. God, she was nice, thought Hamish. I as nothing, he grinned. I just caught myself feeling guilty. Is only natural, butted in the angel. Why, but not for any of the proper stuff. I was feeling guilty because I was sat here thinking Staple Grove isn't actually that bad. He laughed again, feeling giddy. The angel looked around at her surroundings. It was a fairly pleasant village, as human villages went, full of bricks and plants. Her favourites were those enormous sticks with the lights on. Her favourite parts were those enormous sticks with the lights on. They were great, especially the tricoloured ones. It would be an offence worse than murder to say that in Norton Fitzwarren, said Hamish, rubbing the fuzzy hair at the nape of his neck, distracted. We're supposed to have this great rivalry, you see. I've no idea if Staple Grove know they're in the feud, but we certainly do. It's so stupid. They're practically the same village, especially since the new houses went up. Although, I suppose that was a big part of the problem. God, everything's so petty, isn't it? I'm sick of it. Sick of all of it. He scraped his foot loudly across the floor again. The noise sounded so sharp in the stopped village. The angel sat patiently, not interrupting or nudging, just waiting. Why? 
he continued in a low voice. The word came out raspy and sad, stretched out across his frustration on the rack. Why does there have to be an issue? Why does she have to make it complicated? Why can't she just, just, I don't know. His giggling energy had evaporated and he was surprised to find his throat aching. He cleared it and it didn't help. D. The angel was silent. Finally, she cocked her head slightly to one side and squinted at his scrapings on the ground. You've met Jesus? Hamish nodded. I know. Did that not bring you up to speed? The angel asked. In what way? You're now one of a handful of humans who have ever existed who know definitively that God exists. You must be able to see now that Sarah's parents had no choice but but to be religious. They didn't do it to spite you or to make it harder. They were just right all along. The angel spoke slowly. Hamish felt she was trying to make it sound like she was working it out as she went along too so as not to make him feel bad. It didn't work. He felt awful. End of chapter 36. Ooh, what is happening? Um, oh, I would add another chapter, but I think I'm going to eke it out. We'll do it chapter by chapter at, at nights at the moment, just until I have a strong idea of what we're going to do. Um, I've been thinking about what we can do in this spot. Like, if you want to carry it on, I know some people won't want to, but they've been like, you know, people are watching it. So, um, if you want to, and I've been trying to think whether it would be better to do writing that was um, like independent of each other every night so you could miss one and come back in without having to catch up or whether to carry on doing something that was like a long form story um that you know is progressing so if you have any thoughts on that tweet me or, or facebook me or instagram me and let me know what you'd prefer um whether you'd want it to be like a long form story that we get a chapter of each night or whether we could do something like have a short story every night and i'll write that based on um whatever you want to do short story wise so however you feel let me know and we can put something together um it'd be nice to carry it on it's been it's been nice um cool right I'm going to record a podcast now oh that's another thing um the podcast that I was working on before all this happened is going to be released and that should be being released in the next 10 days two weeks it's all about day trips in the UK which is um not exactly the subject but it does mean you get to listen to some people on a day out so you'll feel like you've been on a day out but anyway I'll let you know, I'll know when that's going out so um have a lovely evening and day in New Zealand and uh um yeah thank you uh have I'll see you tomorrow bye